Keeping a garden by hand is a very tedious operation. A garden hoe makes the work much easier. This large machine hoe makes the work easier still. Both the garden hoe and the machine hoe are machines. The machine hoe is driven by an engine. With this log of wood, these boys are making the simplest and most important machine in the world. They propose to move a large boulder. The log also needs something to rest on, and the machine is called a lever. Any rod or bar resting on a turning point is called a lever. The turning point is called the fulcrum. Levers are used in various ways to move things. The lever made by the boys is called a crowbar. Here is another form of crowbar. The lever does not have to be straight. In both these cases, the turning point or fulcrum is nearer to the load. As a result, we can move a greater load. We do not, however, move the load as far as the hand moves. Here is a hammer being used like this to pull out a nail. A large force is needed, but the nail has to be moved a short distance only. This spoon is being used as a lever. We can use the lever to move something quickly over a longer distance by moving the fulcrum away from the load. This time, however, the force exerted at the other end of the lever is smaller. Here, two levers are joined together to strike a drum quickly with a small movement of the foot. Notice that the direction in which the force acts has also been changed. The fulcrum of a lever can be at the end. In this case, heavier loads can be lifted. The wheelbarrow is a lever like this. A heavy load in it can be raised off the ground. In a rowing boat, oars are used in the same way. The fulcrum is at the end and the oars push against the boat. The forearm is similar, but the load is in the hand at the end of the lever. The effort to move the arm is exerted by the muscle near the elbow, which is the fulcrum. The hand can move quickly. The jaw is like this, too. Often, levers are used in pairs. Notice where the fulcrums, efforts and loads are. To lift heavy loads vertically, they are often pushed or pulled up gentle slopes. Smaller forces are required to raise the load, but they must be moved through greater distances. This is a second type of machine called an inclined plane. A car travelling up a hill is using an inclined plane. It is possible to make an inclined plane in an endless form by wrapping it round a rod, like this. An endless inclined plane is called a screw. It is another machine and makes work easier to do. To drive the load vertically up the inclined plane on a screw, the screw itself usually rotates. Here, a heavy motor car is being raised vertically by turning a screw continually. Only a small force is needed, but many turns of the screw.
The car rises very slowly. The car is climbing up the inclined plane of the screw. This is another example of the inclined plane called a wedge. It is used to force things apart. A chisel is a wedge. So is a knife. Again, the inclined plane itself moves. Wedges can be very small, like this needle. Or very large, as in the mechanical plough. Sometimes levers are arranged to act continuously, as in this pencil sharpener. The load is at the cutting blade. The lever may become a solid wheel on an axle, as in this door knob. If the effort were applied at the axle, a very large one would be required to open the door. A doorknob is an example of a simple machine called a wheel and axle. So is a car's steering wheel. Both are in fact continuously acting levers. Continuously acting levers can drive each other by interlocking teeth on the wheels. In an egg beater, they're used to increase the speed. This is called a gear. The teeth of one gear fit into or mesh with the teeth of another gear. A small gear driving a large gear increases the force but reduces the speed of rotation of the larger gear. A large gear driving a small gear increases the speed of rotation, but the force it applies is reduced. In the egg beater, one large gear is driving a small gear, which drives another small gear. The small gears are turning at the same rate, but much faster than the large gear. Instead of gears, wheels can drive each other with the help of connecting belts. They can increase or decrease speeds and forces in the same way as gears. Here a man is using a wheel to change the direction of a force. The rope passes round a groove in the rim of the wheel. A wheel used like this is called a pulley. Pulleys change the direction of a force. They do not affect its size. Pulleys can also be fastened to a load to move with it. Each time a rope passes round a movable pulley, it can move twice the load. This is a large and complicated mechanical tool. It is, however, made up of a combination of the simple machines seen in this film. lever, the wheel and axle, the gear, the pulley, and the wedge. It is the same with a woodwork vise. The screw is easily seen. If you examine this picture, you will see that the speedboat has been designed on the principle of the wedge 
or inclined plane.